Hi, this is Ram with Better Tattooing, and uh, on the drive over to the shop today to record this video, somebody actually asked about it. So, this one's for you. Let's talk about skin tags when you're doing tattoos. All right. Now that that's over with, skin tags. What are they? Well. Usually what we're going to see is base layer of the skin. There's going to be like this little growth that kind of comes up. Or maybe it'll be flat and long and wide or something else. It's just going to be like an extension of the skin that's just not normal topography, right? Um, <clears throat> and skin tags, which I think they're actually called like acrocordons um, in like medical terms, they're nothing really to be too afraid of when you're doing a tattoo. I mean, realistically, when we're going to do a tattoo, if you're going to see any type of malformation in the topography of the actual skin, it's something to take note of um, and should be avoided. Now, the neat thing about these is where they're attached to the skin. Usually, what we're going to see is the root, <clears throat> wherever this is coming off of, is going to be kind of... Um, limited to the actual margins of where the skin tag is located inside the skin. So unlike a mole where, where we normally would want to have, like we have a mole raised spit nevi off the top of the skin, we want to leave a margin that's usually going to be, you know, a quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch. It has to be a little bit of a buffer around that so we're not going to be damaging the actual like structure of the skin. On these skin tags, we can get basically right up to them. Uh, but that's going to be in relation to whatever angle of insertion that you're using, right? If your needle is going to be going down and past into the root area of where these things are actually located inside the skin, <clears throat> even though your tube end may look like it's here, that throw of the needle may go underneath, you just have to adjust for that, right? And if we want to get into some really heavy, like, trig, <laughs> we could do that, but we don't have to. Usually what I'll say is, if you're going to be using any sort of machine, is leave a sixteenth of an inch gap, or roughly around like one to two mil, and uh, just don't tattoo around it, right? Leave a buffer. Um, what happens if you try to tattoo skin tags? Well, there's not a lot of actual evidence out there scientifically that shows us doing anything with skin tags is going to result in something bad. But a few years ago, maybe it was about now 15 years ago or so, um, there was a test to see in a very small cohort in a very specific population of the world if skin tags were associated with HPV, human papillomavirus, right? And the idea would be that if there is a biopsy done of a skin tag and this is HPV positive, <clears throat> that going over this with a needle and tattooing in and around the skin of where this is, everywhere that, that needle goes afterwards, right, is going to potentially spread that infection to additional areas of the body. And that is possible, evidently. Um, certain types of HPV have been associated with skin tags. Um, and so anytime we're gonna be dealing with an infectious agent if we're running in it, around it, or over it, especially if we're disturbing the space where it's been kind of quarantined into the body and being held in stasis, the chances that it can move are there, but this is a potential. There's not been any type of research I've found that have shown this to be true. Um, normally when you get a skin tag, the doctors, if it's bothering you, they just come in and they'll like, you know, cut it, freeze it or something else and they just remove it off the skin. And I mean like literally like if it's at the top of the skin, they just hack it off flat and it tends to go away. Um, <clears throat> and doing that, especially if it's just like done by a skilled dermatologist, they're not marking and doing a bunch of other stuff to the skin, there's gonna be some type of infection control or uh, something else that's gonna be done for like the wound care and management after it's done to make sure that the body doesn't, you know, I guess freak out. Because normally with skin tags, there's gonna be, depending on the size of them, you're gonna see a bit more vascularization. There may be changes in pigmentation. So like if the skin's lighter here, the skin tags may be a little bit uh, darker. <laughs> Should we stay? Yeah, skin tags is fine. We don't have to get into the really fancy wording on this stuff. Um, so when you're working with them, especially where the design is at, and this is kind of really important to do in-person consultations before you actually get into doing a tattoo. If you have a space where the tattoo, where you know it's gonna go, and there is skin tags that are going to be maybe, you know, wherever, um, you're gonna see these a lot as well in like the more damp or higher friction spots of people's bodies. <clears throat> There's been a, a higher prevalence seen with people who have obesity, um, diabetes, which is usually associated with that. Um, you're gonna see them in those moist areas, right? Like by the armpits and the groin around the neck. Um, so <clears throat> if you see where these are, you, and I, you know, see this is like an armpit here, right? Um, make sure that you're taking into account 
where they are and then just try to design the design around them, leaving a small space around each one so that way you're not interrupting them. Um, <clears throat> and doing that, as soon as we're going to be disturbing the skin, there's also the potential, because it's just being wounded, that new skin tags may appear where the tattoo is. And if that does happen and people end up getting them removed, of course that's going to disturb the image when it's done. But if they have been removed afterwards, there's nothing saying that you can't go back over those spots and tattoo them again. Kind of cool, right? Um, skin prep, everything else leading up to the tattoo. You just do what you normally do. There's no special stuff with this. Just uh, make sure um, that like if the person has had biopsies or they've talked to a medical professional about this stuff and they have popped HPV positive, either six or 11 or whatever, um, the types of HPV, that, that you keep that in mind when you're doing your tattoo so that you can adjust maybe your angle of insertion or that gapping that you're gonna have around them so that you may not have the potential of spreading. Cool. Simple, easy one. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. This is Ryan from Tattoo, or Better Tattooing, signing off.